been it seemed like a, a pretty comfortable lead for most of the game, and then the Spurs made that run at the end of the third. Uh, what did you guys talk about in between there when you got LeBron and AD back in to uh, push that lead back in the fourth? Just do it on the defensive end. Uh, we had three outstanding defensive quarters, had a lot of slippage in that third quarter. Um, we gave up 21. Hold them to 21 in the first, 20 in the second, 19 in the fourth. But that 34 points coming out of halftime, it's 30 halftime is very extreme. And it's something we've been kind of struggling with all year. But, you know, we, we, we kept grinding, kept digging, and uh, we were able to, to right the ship. But uh, just a great learning lesson that we can't take our foot off the gas. Um, and again, it all starts with two things, taking care of, you know, defending, Taking care of our assignments, holding them to one shot, and also, you know, being organized offensively, playing with the pass, not being in a hurry, and making sure we we secure the ball and not turn it over. And just on the initial thoughts on LeBron right, getting back on the court and just integrating him in. Well, I thought he was phenomenal. He looked great. He was moving great. Obviously, there's going to be some rust there. You know, four games out, uh, really haven't had a chance to practice or do much in that regard. Um, but I thought he looked great, um, and again, that's Bron. So he'll he'll correct his mistakes. He'll definitely self-correct. But you know, he came out, asked him after the game, how did it feel? He said, "Good, really, really good." So that's a great sign. Is another productive night for Anthony. How did you see LeBron's presence impact him? Either helping him out or just changing the way he had his approach. Well, I, I don't know if it changed. I just think, you know, they, they were double teaming both of those guys, you know, on the post. So they weren't going to let them play one on one. I thought they did a great job adjusting, talking in a huddle about different looks in terms of spacing and whatnot. Um, but, you know, having LeBron out there, you know, he's going to get his touches and. AD's going to get his. Russ, when he comes in, he's going to get his. And, you know, Lonnie started off hot. So you just you just kind of have to – basketball is a rhythm sport, so you kind of just have to go with the flow and what's working. So, And AD's great about that. You know, he, it was one point he was about to check into the game, and I said, how you feeling? What you see? Um, he said, I'm good, coach. We winning. <laughs> and, you know, he hadn't done a whole lot individually at that point. That was earlier in the first half. But just that's why I love the kid, man. He's selfless. He's all about the right things. And, um you know, he, he was right there at the forefront, blocking shots, getting rebounds, and so and doing exactly what we need him to do. Durbin, how do you think Dennis play as a starter? Is he still trying to find his way right oh, now? Well, he's still trying to find a rhythm for sure. I thought tonight he's getting closer to looking like the Dennis we're going to see consistently. Um, and again, when I told him he was starting, um, just told him, man, do what you do. And, you know, make him feel you defensively, keep us organized offensively, and be aggressive. And uh, he did that, picking up 94 feet, you know, taking time off their shot clock, turning their guards, making them uncomfortable a little bit, making it difficult for them to just to easily roll into their sets. Uh, but I thought he looked good. I thought you could see the confidence and you could see, you know, just, just his imprint on the game defensively. Darvin, uh, tightened up the front court a little bit, and, and AD and, and Wenyon were mostly your bigs tonight. If you're going to go forward with that, um, you know, what do these guys have to do, especially in the glass, tw San Antonio with 20 offensive rebounds, and obviously that was a huge factor in the third quarter. Yeah, I mean, it just, it's, it's gang rebounds, not just on our bigs. It's on everybody. You know, we, we, we sell out to protect the rim. Guys on the backside, gotta, somebody got to run back. Crack back, what we call our V-back guy. He's got to drop down and get hits on bodies, um, multiple hits, and we can't leak out. We can't assume that the guy's going to get the ball, so now we're headed up floor to go play offense, and we haven't secured a ball. So just getting back to uh, gang rebounding, again, getting hits and, and, and just being really, really active on the glass. And then also, uh, obviously, an emotional return here for Lonnie. Yeah. He played the tribute video. And then what what kind of juice did he give you in the first half? Just huge. You know, uh, guys, different guys stepping up within the lineup. You know, you can never have too much of that. You know, whether it's Lonnie, whether it's, I don't know, Troy coming out hitting shots, or Austin Reeves, you know, coming off. Russ, when he gets into the game, just the more guys we have playing the right way and playing in rhythm and contributing, the, the easier it makes for AD. And it's never happened since, but AD's uh, numbers, they continue to be great. We mentioned in the pregame show with LeBron coming back, the numbers will obviously go down, but will the mentality stay the same? Mm -hmm. And it did on both ends of the floor. 25 points, 10 of 13 from the field, 15 rebounds, the three blocks, 
also four assists. And guys, remember that narrative about AD in the fourth quarter, kind of floating around the three-point line, not very involved. Well, that has changed over the last five games. In the fourth tonight, four for four from the field, 11 points, AD continues to be dominant. Yeah, he, he seems to have found a way to play each night that doesn't involve shooting from the three. Tonight, they didn't allow him to post up, but he said right there, he still ran that pick and roll, you know, from like the, 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 yep. the top of the key to the free throw line extended. He was still in the threat area. He wasn't floating around, making some good dimes. LeBron cutting through the basket a couple times. So yeah, getting the lob over the top. So even though he wasn't operating in the paint because they were double teaming and triple teaming, he still stayed close enough in that area and utilized the pick and roll. And then the, uh, the defense is still, you know, a, a big priority for him. You know what else I like? Meta, in the first quarter, Pop kind of showed what they were going to do with him all night. He didn't have a lot of field goal attempts. He only had four points. But he stayed patient in that first half and did most of his damage out of the break starting in the third and fourth quarter. You love to see that. He said, okay, if you're going to double me, we're going to move the ball around. And Lonnie was the leading scorer at halftime. I mean, playing against Pop, that's one thing I know. He's always going to come up with some type of strategy to make you feel uncomfortable yeah. or someone else. You're not playing against the players. You're also playing against Pop. And I, the key to playing against Pop, I believe, is just, do, just let things happen naturally. Yeah. Right? Don't force yourself into something because Pop is always trying to set traps. AD did a good job. This is exactly what AD needs to do the rest of the way, as long as LeBron is healthy and in that lineup. He's not going to get the 36.18 rebound games when LeBron is there next to him. It's just not going to happen. But 25 and 15, A, that's impressive. B, that's doable for a guy like AD. Kind of what you said, Geeter, uh, some good stocks tonight, three block shots mm -hmm. and a steal. Kept those up. Not quite the five and five he had in each category against Phoenix the other night, but still, you take four stocks uh, anytime you can. And, and a little shout out, too, to Lonnie Walker, the fourth, for, uh, you know, really carrying the team in that first quarter, doing everything he's been showing us so far in just a, a month and a half with the Lakers, uh, driving. Uh, showing some explosion, hitting some uh, good threes, too, in that first half. Yeah, you got to love Lonnie Walker. He even talked about it with Mike Trudell uh, in the pregame show, just how much he appreciated being drafted yep. by the Spurs and be, being under Pop's tutelage for four years and how much he learned. And, and then he gambled on himself, really. I mean, sure, he got paid more, but he also said, I'm going to come to the Lakers under the bright lights in the big city and on that stage playing with LeBron and AD, Brez under a one-year deal, yeah. and it's paying off right now. Just it, like we saw with Malik Monk a year ago. Yeah, and keep in mind, okay, earlier uh, in the summer, the Spurs initially offered him uh, at least a one-year free agency deal. It's called a qualifying offer. They extended it to him. He's a restricted free agent. The Spurs could match any offer he signed with another team, but then it got rescinded. Okay, so it's not like the Spurs maybe missed out on him or anything like that. Sometimes the agent will call uh, Popovich, obviously the president, in addition to being the